And you're Olivia, right? I, no, I'm Jenny. No, I'm joking. I'm Olivia. All right. I'm here at the UCL Formula EV workshop with Donnie Clark, uh, the managing director of the team. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm good. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, it's we're, nice we're to be here. here. Yeah. And what does your role entail on the team? I'm the mechanical tech director for the team, so my overall role is kind of just like overseeing all the like mechanical development of the car that means just like making sure like um, our designs like meet all of our requirements for the competition we're able to like pass all the rules that we need to we have performance targets for the car and then ultimately lead into like the building and testing phase so making sure we have all the parts that we need um, and everything like just to be, be successful so just kind of an integration piece to the team between all the sub teams to make sure everyone's talking to each other and we like sort through problems quickly. Yesterday, you said you had a big build session. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little more about that? Yeah, so we do like an annual, we call it a build a thon, so a tradition of ours, where we kind of start with like a bare chassis and end goal is rolling car. So we were able to get rolling, steering, braking car yesterday. So that was a pretty big milestone for us. And now we're kind of full push into, you know, EV mode, get everything set up integration-wise. So. And how long was that session? Uh, yesterday, it was about 14 hours. Usually, we try to go like 24. Previous years, we've done 24, but um, yesterday, we finished pretty early. So okay, 24 hours. Yeah. 24 hours, yeah. It's, it's are you up the whole time, you guys rotating? Uh, we had like a whole shift thing going on, okay. but I mean, some people just stay for, for the vibes, you know. It's, you it's fun to be around for 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. A lot of energy of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of Red Bulls, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of caffeine. So were you a big part of the build session yesterday? Yeah, yeah. No. So I was here um, the whole time just kind of helping out where I can, making sure things are going. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of work done yesterday, so I was super happy about that. Awesome. What are some of the biggest design challenges you guys faced this year? Uh, I feel like we've gotten the mechanical aspect down to like a pretty straightforward, like min viable product, and then we can, you know, go on with our normal optimization. But since we're still like a second year EV team, this really is just all the integration of all the electronics components. I mean, I'm definitely not electrically inclined, um, but yeah, I mean, they're putting in so many hours just, you know, debugging all the, the boards that we get. Um, we're going with like a custom BMS and custom vehicle control, vehicle control unit BCU this year. So rather than using an off the shelf one. Oh, okay. So that's definitely been a pretty big challenge. Um, a lot of iterations going to be required for that, so just more more time we got to try to put into it. So yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, it's definitely electronics that is the biggest challenge for us, just since that's way less established oh. uh, than all the mechanical sides. So what's the most interesting thing about your design this year? I'd say I'm a big fan of our like driver ergonomics this year. This is like a lot of features of this car um, because this is like our second EV are like very similar to the last car because um, like our main goal is just to like increase our time to test the car so we were just trying to build as quickly as possible so obviously we made improvements uh, off of lessons learned from last year but for the most part a lot of the systems are similar but um, we kind of uh, were able to like redefine um, all the like the ergonomics so we have like a custom steering wheel uh, that's 3d printed out of nylon um, and uh, we like had um, Cynthia who is our like responsible engineer on the team for all the ergonomic stuff um, did a like clay mold of the driver's hands and scanned that in and then we were able to 3D print that so it's like literally fitted to the driver's hands um, and we also just did a lot of um, changes in our design to make sure like the angle of the seat and stuff like that really meet the requirements of the driver so I think like the emphasis on that this year has improved and the steering wheel is really creative so I'm really happy about how that's turned out. Do you guys have like a test area for when you have it completed to drive it? Yeah, so we're very fortunate. Um, Willow Springs Raceway, which is up by Lancaster, they allow uh, our team and, you know, a lot of the local teams to go up to their racetrack and, and test for free. You know, we just have to let them know when we're going up there and they're like, okay, yeah, come down. And oh, that's we awesome. Get, we get a full racetrack to ourselves usually. So, yeah, it's, it's super cool. Like, Willow Springs, it's it's like a world-renowned racetrack that we have kind of in our backyard. So it's super cool to like be able to kind of do that. With it. Yeah. Uh, what role does data acquisition play in refining the car's performance? Uh, yeah, pretty big role. It's like part of the whole tuning process. Like really the way like I guess engineering, in my opinion, works in general. And like especially like for FSE, like if you want to do well, it's like you have to design something. Um, like in our case, we're designing a car. Um, and that's broken down into like several systems. Um, and then you manufacture that to like what you design it to, but you have to tie back in like 
physical testing of whatever you're making. So for us, that's a combination of like tests we can do, like while the car is just like sitting in our in our shop, and then also just testing running the car to actually like prove that you're hitting and like optimizing around like your design target. So like for example, like stuff that we're hoping to get to this year, like our aerodynamics team does like a ton of work in like computational fluid dynamics or CFD. Um, but like the thing is, those are all just like models that we create. And they don't have like a perfect correlation to any like physical data until we like actually like go out and test the car. Um, so that's like a really like critical step, and I think like a really big point of emphasis for our team this year to really get us to the next level because we've done pretty well in terms of like the design aspect of competition, but never like at the highest level. So um, hoping to get like more data this year to like just validate our like car in general, and I think that will like get us to the next level in terms of like both like just on track performance and then also just like design knowledge. You are the finance manager of the team, correct? Financial director, yeah. Right. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your, what does that role entail? Oh, uh, that entails uh, getting money, spending money, and then communication with the school and sponsors, and then the business presentation, but like through the SAE event. Oh. So those are my four main responsibilities. Oh, so how do you get the money? Oh, I have a whole notion page on this. <laughs> <laughs> Getting money, there's three main avenues. So the school typically gives us around $36,500 a year, kind of depending on how many applications we submit. But the school is very generous with giving money and providing our, our student clubs with the means necessary to carry out our mission. Uh, so we get about thirty-six point five from there. And then through corporate donations, so like Rivian, Tesla also gave, gave us a hefty little stipend. And like Northrop Grumman, the Joseph Beggs Foundation, uh, Chevron, all of these companies give us a little a little helpful right. boost yeah. as well as um, a tech help as well like we, we invite them to our design reviews and they're very uh, giving about feedback and making sure that our designs are as best as best as they can be and then our third avenue is through crowdfunding so that's through our GoFundMe uh, Pan Express fundraisers share Tigo fund or fundraisers uh, family donations things like that that all culminate to our overall budget um, so you get money you spend money <laughs> what was the third one uh, Public relations. So it's just basically talking to the school, and I'm a huge yapper, so I will just go over to the offices and yap for like a few hours, and then I leave. No idea what happened, but I know we talked about something. And then like talking with uh, corporate sponsors as well, and just making sure that uh, the public face of BFR with the school and with corporations is a healthy and clean image. And then how big is your team now since you said it was growing? Uh, we ended the year last year with around you know 50 to 60, uh, like active contributing members and this year we've kept on a, another like 20 or so 20 to 25 new members like oh. mainly freshmen so we're around 80 85 okay strong. so yeah are they all going to come to competition we're taking 46 to competition okay. so yeah i mean we're even with 46 we're usually one of the biggest teams <laughs> in competition you know so uh, but yeah it, it, we try to bring as many as we can yeah um, you know, all hands on deck. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even just if you're going, just to like hang out and you know check out other teams. Like the experience is great. So. Absolutely. All yeah. the sponsors get a job exactly, out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We've had people on the team, you know, walk out of there with jobs. You know, Tesla, SpaceX. You know, they're yeah. always there. How do you new members get trained and integrated in your team? That's something we actually take a lot of pride in. So as far as like joining the club, we have no barrier to entry. We don't do any kind of like applications or anything. Anybody can truly join the team engineering or not. We have a new member training series uh, that is required to become like an official member, which mm -hmm. is just signified by getting your own like room racing email. Uh, but that training is, first you start off, you get to interview uh, returning members and really kind of ask them any kind of questions you want. Okay. Uh, kind of integrate yourself more on that front, feel more comfortable coming to the shop. Uh, and then CAD training and electronics training, uh, depending on you know what you want your focus to be on, that's required. Uh, and then each sub team kind of has their own new member projects that they give to new members. Uh, a lot of times they're R&D, but most of the time that R&D is planned to be implemented in like a future car. So it's a project that a new member can own, uh, like a responsible engineer on our team would or like a lead would. Uh, so it's their own dedicated project that really takes them through the entire engineering process from design, manufacturing, validation. Um, so that's kind of how we approach getting them kind of up to like the level that we're expecting of you know what a second or third year would be putting into the team okay. uh, in terms of you know like engineering I guess you could say we've all formed a pretty close bond like we try to have a couple social events like 
every quarter, you know, going to car shows or, you know, Peterson Automotive Museum is close by on super cool yeah. uh, bonfires, you know. We have a retreat every year, nice. you know, which is super cool. So yeah. yeah, yeah, we try to keep it fun. And then how do you guys recruit? Um, so there's like a couple big club fairs at the beginning of the year okay. that, you know, every club goes out and, you know, a lot of times the people that are interested in the club, they kind of already know that we exist and they're just there to like, you know, fill out the forms to say that they're interested. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the people that join are like, yeah, I looked you guys up, like I, I wanted to join FSAE, you know, heard about it in high school type thing. So oh. um, and how'd you hear about it? What got you into it? High school, same thing. Okay. I mean, I just heard about it. Uh, my dad actually was one of the first to do FSAE at SDSU. So, really? Yeah, so he told me some stories about it. I mean, I've always loved racing, loved cars, and this was a, a good way to, you know, apply that passion with engineering. So. Yeah. For how many hours do you spend in the workshop, like, a, on a typical week? On average, like, most people on the team are putting, like, 30 to 40 hours, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times it's, like, in between classes you come by, you're here for, like, three, four hours, and then, you know, you go to class again, come back. Yeah, um, I mean, like this place is very much like a a place for people to hang out. It's more than just like a, a typical workshop. You know, we have like this whole room behind us that you know tables, chairs. You know, people just do the homework in there. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's a fun place to be. You know, yeah. uh, most people on the team just come here and move classes and everything. And it's nice. So come hang nice out. Little, nice little atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if there's an e or an IC team out there who's looking to switch over to EV, what uh some of the biggest challenges you think they'll face or some advice you can be able uh, I mean, some advice, I mean, start, start recruiting some electrical <laughs> engineers now. I mean, you know, establish a, maybe like a smaller team that, you know, kind of starts looking into the, the EV side of things, you know, before you commit to switching. Um, we did that for like part of a year. Um, you know, we didn't end up using anything that they did, but like, regardless, <laughs> like, if you have something like established and you know it's kind of in everybody's minds that the team's going to go that direction like it, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run a lot of like uh research and development i guess required before you actually start designing the actual cars so. yeah i know what's next for you i'm probably going to be doing a master's program here for another year so okay i'll, I'll be around i'll, I'll right. pop into the shop you know yeah. once in a while but you know a little, little help little yeah exactly <laughs> I'll, I'll take on that little advisory whatever yeah little, but well, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, like, the four years here has been super awesome to be part of the team with, you know, really, really made it a lot more fun, you know, than just going to class every day and going back to my dorm. Watch out for Formula Racing's coming. We put a hell of a lot of work into our car, and, uh, yeah, it's going to look pretty good on track, uh, and not just look good, we're going to be fast, so, yeah.